And here we are with Scotty P himself. Now, for people who aren't aware of you, my friend, how many amateur fights have you had before your pro debut? Well, MMA <laughs> alone, I've had uh, 27. That's just, just MMA. Just, just 27, was it? <laughs> I know, isn't it? <laughs> just think that was enough. Sandbag, it? <laughs> so mm-hmm. your fight with Matthew Elliott, before we get into the nitty-gritty of everything else, that fight yeah. was one of my favourites of the trilogy. That's why I wanted to get you on, because again, like, it is why I love and hate cage warriors. You're both your careers. That fight should be a title fight further down the line. But the fact it was yeah, there, yeah. Was that, oh. a few people have said that to be fair. But um, I think with the uh, what it was with the climate we're in in the minute with COVID, I think it's just to whoever's training and who's bubble. So he's obviously a, a decent level lad. I'm a decent level lad. So um, because he must be training with Paul Hughes and them, and I was training with Jack and Brett. They're the only people training, so it's the only chance we had to fight each other. So um. Where I think normally cage will always build you up a bit. I think it's just we had to chuck them both in just because we both were in the fight. So I think it was one of them. But again, it really did show as well. And now the thing with the amount you've competed versus the amount people tend to compete, like a lot fewer and further between, how mm-hmm. do you sort of see the fights in themselves? Is it more like a sport, like a competition thing? Or is it a big fight? Is it quite a big thing for you as such? What does competition mean to you for, you, for that sort of size? Um, I just... Do you know when it comes to like people playing football and they get to do it every weekend? Mm. Like I tried to take that into fighting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, especially because I want to go all the way with this. I want to uh, make a good career out of it. And I think um, if you look at like the amateur scene, there's only now the amateurs are starting to get these a lot of like bouts in between. Like some some people would have like five amateur bouts go pro. But um, I think you can see now there's a lot more boys getting these 15 to 20 bouts in. And uh, I was going to turn pro at the age of like 20, 21. And I just thought, I went to the IMAFs. I didn't win my first IMAFs. And I thought, there's a, there's higher level boys out there. And there's a standard I need to reach before I can turn pro. So I just wanted to make sure I'd done everything right. Kind of like a Lomachenko. Obviously, without the 400 lot of bouts. But, uh, and the ballet. That's you know, your business. That's up to you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Start dancing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like that as well. Because again, you could always fine a spoon fed opponent you could have like four and hours of pro from fighting but bums but then what i like the integrity exactly. to try and be a certain standard and again the honest conversation that you know what i could but i don't want to yeah i like that a lot and now with the the bouts themselves then how, is it a pure camp for you when you have the preparation or is it just training as normal and you just peak certain things what does it mean for you for preparation wise there is no camp really i'm always training all year like i took this fight on three weeks notice you know what i mean which mm-hmm. is um which is nothing like I'm always training, I'm always in camp, I'm always getting ready, I'm always sparring. So like I could take a fight two weeks notice, three weeks notice. I'm like, it's something I like to do. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, you've got to be careful of the injuries because uh, MMA is a hard sport on the body. But um, as long as you take care of yourself and you keep in that gym, keep evolving. That's the way I like to look at it. I don't really do. Obviously, we have eight week camps, but I'm already training as hard anyway. So it's just part of it really for me. But with that frequency as well, competition especially, like with your longevity, is, do you spar a lot? Is it a lot of technical stuff? Is it heavy? Is it hard? What is your intensity like to try and maintain that pace? Yeah, I got you. So um, when we spar, we all kitted up. We have the head guards on, shins, knee pads. And then um, we go with the rule of this is 50% to the head. We don't really throw big shots to the head, but harder to the body and on the takedowns. But um, obviously we have our days where we go a bit harder, but we are a lot smarter with sparring. It's not like two idiots just going in there trying to kill each other. Like, there's no point in that, is it? Do you know what I mean? But um, no, we, we spar, I would say, quite a lot, but it's not idiotic sparring, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It's just to get your time in and get ready for the fight. Because the only way I believe to get ready for a fight is to be in a fight situation, to fight. So, um, yeah, just don't be idiots of it. We're not trying to kill each other when we spar. Try and keep it quite smart, like. Now, when you talk about fight situations, then how specific is your fight situation? Are you getting your knockoff MCs in? Are you doing like a proper makeshift fight pit <laughs> simulation? Or is it like, okay, we're all going to watch and call you cunts and you've got to try and kill each other? <laughs> or like, what, what's it like a deck to <laughs> no, a um, WWE sort of thing. <laughs> no, it's just um, the boys, we just get into the room. Our coaches are watching us. We get um, five minute rounds on. You know, sometimes we'll do 10 five minute rounds. Sometimes we'll do five minute rounds, five fives, three fives. So we'll do shark tanks. We have a fresh person on you every minute. But um, it's normally the five-minute rounds. Sometimes we do it with the same partner as well, so you kind of um, get used to that, breaking down someone's style and not having to switch up on you the next round. That's quite cool. But um, no, we normally go for the 
five, six, seven, eight, five minute rounds. But like I said, we're not kidding each other. Mm. We're getting the we're getting the cardio in and the conditioning as well. So it's um I like the way it's done up there, if I'm honest. Now with your shark tanks and the way you're doing that, is that just open sparring shark tanks? So it's like uh, circumstantial positional stuff. What is that normally? No, so what we do with the shark tanks normally is we'll have um say it's a five minute round, we'll have a fresh person every minute. But um towards like the third, fourth, fifth minute, we people normally go wrestle heavy because obviously you've done four minute rounds, you you got a fresh person every minute, like your hands drop a little bit. Obviously, it's meant to gas you out, like put you in that like um, bad situation in the fight. So the boys normally go a bit more wrestle heavy instead of trying to like knock you out in like the last like two minutes. But um, so yeah, we try to do it that way. Go more grapple heavy on the person in the middle. Obviously, depending on who they're fighting as yeah, well. Yeah. If they go off a certain style, then we'll try and adapt the styles and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what the next question then, because again, I was up Matthew at it very grappling heavy again. Think Judoka and everything else. Like, how do you plan for that? Is your more your own game focus on that? Is it countering his game? Where does your priority lie in the preparation for that kind of fight? Well, with that type of fight, because um, Matthew Ed, he's a solid wrestler, Judo guy, he's got some really good credentials there. But um, I train in day in, day out with Brett and uh, Jack Shaw, mm. which you probably know <laughs> yeah, brilliant yeah. wrestlers themselves. So um, I was confident going in. I think, like some people say, I've done well defending his takedowns, which I believe I did. He got me down a few times because he's a, he's a solid in that area. But um, I have them. Um, day in day out trying to like batter me against the wall wrestle me and that like so if I can do a little bit against them I'm quite confident in my abilities against other people do you know what I mean so that's why I took the fight like people were like oh should you take the fight is it good but like like I said I want to be at the top one day and you've got to be able to beat everyone so uh you've got to jump in there like and that's a huge thing I respect because again as much as it is a, a big step in competition it is a big step because again if you end up getting the result you then get a bit further in your career or off the bat. Again, you've already earned a your credentials. Quicker, right? yeah. But this is what I mean. It's the Mason Jones, like the, to give another Welsh equivalent of a cage warriors athlete who's then gone to the UFC. He's taken mm-hmm. big steps and he's gotten further with those bigger steps. So exactly, again, yeah. if you've had the preparation as well with Jack Shaw, the sort of the horrible suffocating pressure. And again, I've heard um, horror stories from Indy about Brett Johns' pressure. Oh uh, yeah, it, <laughs> so, there's disgusting that, man. So yeah. The I'll, next I'll, level. I'd imagine you'd be quite confident with your ability in that sort of thing. And this is why the match was your fight. I say match as well. I keep slaving terms. People get upset for some reason. But anyway. Oh, you crack on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your fight with um, <laughs> Matthew Elliott. Again, it's very back and forth. That's what I liked about the sort of... the I think it was the intricacies I really liked about the sort of wrestling details, the MMA-specific wrestling details. And again, the proper chess match where it was. And I really liked that. In regards to watching it back, what would you say is the best thing you did in that fight, your sort of highlight of that moment? Probably breaking his nose with a jab, like <laughs> that's probably the highlight. Like, but um, he's a dog, man. Do you mean I caught him a few times and I thought I could maybe take him out here on the feet, but um, he stuck to his game plan. He got the wrestle heavy. Maybe I was in, it, especially after that second round, I out wrestled him. I think maybe I should have gone into that first for more of a wrestle heavy game plan myself. Maybe put him against the fence with a edged out on the scorecards. Then, but um, these are just little details I'll just take back to the gym work on and improve on for next time out. And this is something else along the same lines of the frequency of competition. Again, something like this, obviously a professional bout versus a frequent IMAF or an AMI. There's a lot more weight behind it. But regards to the after action kind of report, do you break down inch by inch what you've done right and wrong? Is it just, okay, that's a general concept and run away with that? What is your after action like report as such? Yeah, so um, especially with this fight, there's, there's a few positives to take. My strike in, I felt was quite sharp. The defense, but what, what I feel like I need to work on is initiating more. I'm happy to deal with what people throw at me, but that's not winning the fight. You're just dealing with them. They're on the front foot, then they're winning. So I think it's just just um, going in and attacking and approaching different. Maybe more attack heavy, hunt for them a bit more instead of being on the counter striking type of back foot type style, if you know what I mean. So just basically hunt for them a bit more, going for the kill maybe. So that was more specific to the fight itself. The question is more basically your general principle for how you review your performance. But I like the fight. Okay. Hey, this is what I've done well, but that's not well enough to score. Again, it's I like how it's not just A, A equals B and stuff. It's more so, okay, I'm doing this. That is good. But again, it's the scoring. It's the fight IQ side of it. I like that. Yeah. Well. So is it, how much thought do you give to it? Is it something you dwell on like day by day? Is it get to you quite personally? Is it just okay there and then? And how... there'll be moments where like I'll just be on my Todd I don't know just watching TV and I'll just be going through it in my head like 
fuck, why didn't I just do that? Why didn't I do this? But that's, it's all, it's all good. So it's said and done now, isn't it? So you can dwell on it as much as you want. But um, I think as long as you're making a conscious effort to improve in the gym, I think more likely will resolve itself, sort itself out, do you know what I mean, the problem. But um, yeah, man, you sometimes I'm just sitting here and little things will just come to you and you're just like tamping with yourself for 10 minutes. But uh, you just got to move on. It's one of them. So it's mind your own business in the shower. You're like, you know, you're a fucking idiot. Why'd you do that? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> slapping myself like <laughs> a face full of head and shoulders. Oh god. Uh, uh, in, in the eye, like <laughs> just burning away. Like, oh no, it's a double failure. What a, what a day. What a, what a start this Wednesday is. Monday <laughs> sec. <laughs> uh, I'll lose my train of thought. Here but again, um, when it comes to the frequency of competition, and again, obviously the bigger platform, do you have like a certain like checklist when you get there on the day in regards to keeping your head in a good headspace? Do you get quite flustered by the nerves um, at the moment? I know. Well, this fight this is the longest I've had from competition since the age of like 10, to be fair. It's been like a year and a half and I haven't been in the cage. And um, I kind of thought, I was like, is this going to be a problem? Like this ring rest stuff. I don't know if I believe in it and all that. But when I was warming up and I was getting my hands wrapped, I'd like missed the feeling of getting my hands wrapped. I'd missed it and the pads cracking them before going out. And um, it just felt like something. I remember going into the cage and it just felt like saying, oh, right, I'm back here and I'm happy days. And I've, I've missed this type of feeling. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But um, I think because I've had so much competition as well from a young age as well, just being like every other week, something doing something every month, my mind has kind of got used to the, the routine of it. If you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, I get nervous. I think everyone gets nervous. You'd be silly if you didn't. But um, I, I, again, I know how to control it, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, it feels kind of like the same. Now, what is your process for sort of controlling it? Because, again, as much as it's more of a general rule of thumb, I want your, how do you do you? Like, say you're getting a bit like, heat up, okay, shit, this could happen X, Y, and Z. How do you keep yourself in a good headspace? I got you. So, say, um, well, just in the changing rooms or of the day of the fight, does it? Uh, we'll do different. Just so, we'll do different situations. We do like leading up, say four or five weeks out. You're just training as normal, but you're getting a bit keyed up in the build up for it. I got you. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's kind of like positive reinforcement to yourself. So, um, you might just be sitting there and say, "For it's a good judo boy." I'd be like, ah, I'm like stuck in my head. Like, what if he gets me in this position on the fence? And then, like, I, it doesn't matter who's in the room. I could just zone out then, and I'll just put myself in that position and get out of it. Do you know what I mean? So it's just like positively reinforcing yourself. If you have a little negative thought coming to your head, just wipe it out completely. Do you know what I mean? That's what I like. That's how I go about it. If you know. So just to sort of make it a bit clearer, is it you visualizing yourself in that position and getting out of it? Or is it you actually practicing the problem you're going to quote unquote face up to? I just visualize it. So I won't like get up in the room and start tumbling under hooks and stuff like, like that. Like, uh, get get two on one. On me. <laughs> get two on one. Block the elbows. Don't worry. They're not 12 to 6. You'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not the moment. No, like, come back. <laughs> <laughs> Illegal shot. Like. But no, man, it's just, um, it's just, I just visualize it. Basically. Put my poor mum's getting 12 to 6. Thinking, oh, don't worry. <laughs> Dan with a head, he got no TKO. I like <laughs> hey, tapology is tapology, you know what I mean? You got to get your dogs. A win's a win, you know? <laughs> that's it. Like... <laughs> oh, I'm, bre- I'm, I'm breathing, I'm calm, I'm good. <laughs> uh, in the mo- in the fight itself, obviously, you've been in a number of different exchanges, different situations, the highs and the lows. When you're in the fight and something's not going your way, getting taken down in a bad position. How are you with mm-hmm. dealing with that there and then? Is it something you're quite composed with? Is it something that's quite, I don't know. Yeah, I try and stay composed. Um, and then I just try and get out of the bad position. So if you notice, like, to be fair to Matthew, you took me down a few times. My mind to get back to my feet pretty much straight away. Mm-hmm. So it's just dealing with the problem in front of me. He took my back at one point. And I could have panicked and been like, oh, I'm losing now. I'm losing this round. He's on my back. I just stay composed, clear the hooks and got out of the situation. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's about just staying composed in your head and keeping to the game plan. Now, again, all these sort of things you're saying there, they're all spot on, but again, it sounds very much, okay, I guess I could try that, but then the panic kind of overwhelms you. I take it this is something that's been earned, not quite, you know, some natural thing that's come to you. <laughs> no, yeah, it's don't get me wrong. I've been in fights where, um, I don't know if it's like an autopilot I hit, in my head, like, where it's just like, right, I'm in the fight now. Because I find, like, when I come into the fight, the best thing about fighting is it, the only thing that matters for 15 minutes is the fight. I mean, you, you don't think of anything else outside. Well, 
I don't know if other fighters do, but I don't like. So um, oh, I wonder I'm gonna have food, food after this and shit like that. Leave the washing on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> leave the landing like, oh fuck, electric bill's gonna go through the roof. But um, no, uh, it's just yeah, I just stay composed. I've had like. Like including my K1 fights, amateur kickboxing bouts, I've probably been like in a type of competition space over a hundred times. Like so, um, I kind of know how to deal with it. But what I what I did do think I need to switch on a bit, especially from that last fight, was just um, especially the third round, just more initiative and going after it a bit more. And I and I took that upon myself. That's my own fault. Do you know what I mean? But um, that's something I will correct moving okay. forward. Like okay, that's kind of the point though. Again, it's having that kind of assessment period and where. Uh, this conversation gives me a lot more confidence in the certain things you're sort of saying because where you get two people you get people who are they're quite flippant when they lose yeah it doesn't matter i don't care i think that's an alarm bell and people who compete yeah. so often like the the win or the loss is kind of almost irrelevant because they're gonna be the next fight next weekend like you're saying they're like footballers if they lose one weekend they don't care the following weekend they've got another match yeah they like, get a chance to redeem themselves a week later uh, we've got to wait months do you know what i mean but this but... Is where I, I like the way your approach is with this because again you're saying things along the lines of can correct me if I'm wrong. It's okay. This is the problem. This still stings, but I'm getting on with it. I'm not panicking now. It's okay. Matter of fact, shit. Yes, I'm down. Yeah. Yes, I'm losing the round, but my back's there. Okay, I need to get this one hook out. Get my angle out. Get master the mat. Get on top. Get up. I don't have to mm -hmm. worry about. It. I need to sort it out. The more you worry about it, the more you're stuck in that position. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. The more like to so say, you say you get taken down and you're stressing about the position. All right, that's a minute gone of you stressing instead of a minute of you trying to get out. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's now, the way I look at it. Like. With obviously the development in your career, the time spent on the mats and things you prioritize, things you cut out, what is your <laughs> what is one of the things you used to do all the time that you've cut out? Like some people don't really drill as much, some people go hell for lever on it. Like, is there anything in that where you've what is the meat you've sort of leaned out as such with your training? Mainly at the minute, just because of the COVID and that would be the gi jujitsu. Mm -hmm. I'm not too mad at that because I'm not a huge fan of gi. Like, but <laughs> oh no, we can't do gi classes. I oh, know what a shame. I yeah, know it's, it's such a shame. <laughs> oh well, of course. that's that's probably the biggest difference. But um, I used to grapple a lot back in, especially in my amateur days. But at the time, I was a striker. And my grappling weren't at the best, so I had to grapple a lot to get it to a path. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, mainly now I just think it's just more focused of a full MMA game. Like the grappling's catered to MMA, the wrestling's catered to MMA, striking's catered to MMA. It's just all MMA focused, which is good because I want to be an MMA fighter. If I wanted to do K1, it'd be different. I'd go down the K1 route and grappling, vice versa. Like, but um, yeah, it's just all the MMA and the tour orientated instead of like before, it'd just be like, well, you're going grapple, do foot locks, and, that, and that's brilliant doing the foot locks, but it's not brilliant when you're getting your head caved in at the same time. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, just, just a little stuff. A guy's been more MME focused, I would say. <laughs> Where's somewhere we could take this? But where, um, with with that, are you doing straight no gi jiu jitsu, or are you doing no gi with hitting as well with the gloves on? What, how are you making MMA specific? Are you doing separately? So, um, we we do sessions with like ground and pound grappling, mm -hmm. so it's MME into it, and then we have sessions where this grappling, but we work like on our sweeps and that, so it's okay to be in guard a bit more, work on your submissions, but um. I've always kind of gone in my game, like, I take the piss, like, sometimes. It's like, I say I don't have a guard. I just fucking try and get to a single leg as quick as I can, like, do you know what I mean, off my back. But um, it's because it's MMA and Tory. Like, I, I know if I'm on my back in an MMA fight, I'm not winning. So I need to get that underhook. I need to get that single. I need to get in that dog fight. I mean, hit the snap down, come to top. Because um, that's where you're winning the fight in MMA, do you know what I mean? Mm. I think I like that for principle base as well because again, this isn't like if you're stressed out, remembering inch by inch details is kind of irrelevant. Like, okay, I'm forget mm. everything but again. Okay, uh, is my back on the mat? Shit, get the fuck back up. And again, it's like the floor, yeah, literally yeah. the wall and the floor is lava. Get the fuck back up on your feet. Up, <laughs> yeah, <bit>. literally. <laughs> but I, I like That's how that because again, you need that kind of rules of thumb for like when push comes to stuff, how to like, crack on with it. And mm -hmm. one thing I want to sort of get into is strength and conditioning wise. What, how many days are you committing to it? Is it all MMA specific stuff? Is it general fitness stuff? What is your SNC looking like? Well, um, I've recently got my mate. His name's Rowan Crocker. He's doing like an SNC course in um, uni. He's part of the Ospreys um, rugby team down in. Hmm. And uh, rugby obviously is quite big in Wales, well, it is in the UK, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And he's um, he's got like an internship with them. Also, he's into his big into his SNC and he's just started doing my weights and that. 
But I was getting into it before this fight. But obviously, when the fight comes in, you can't really hit the weights heavy and all that. You don't want to risk injury. So um, that's something I'm looking forward to getting back on now. I had a good solid two weeks of that. But before that, I've never really... I've done the odd sled pushes here and there. Like, do you mean? <laughs> I've made fun. things hard for myself to do, but it's not been the correct stuff. But um, yeah, so um, the s and side of things. Oh, so you get your runs in and that. Get your bit of cardio in, but like with the weights and that now trying to take that to a new level pardon me and uh, we do quite a lot I think you get your conditioning from sparring as well you get your conditioning you get your fight conditioning from fighting it's not like right do like 20 burpees and like 10 sled pushes and you can fight comfortably in MMA then it's not like that. I mean, you gotta go through the conditioning in the rounds as well to push yourself no end to not push yourself so I try and do it from that as well but yeah I try to cover every basis to be fair I like the balance of that. I like how it's the, sp- the specific thing for what you're doing, but also the conditioning to help you do it as well. Because like you're saying mm-hmm. there, it's not, you could do five fives right now, nice and light and composed, no problem. But someone's trying to take your fucking head off for a world title. It's a difference gonna, again, isn't it? You're yeah. going to be very tired very quickly, not doing anything. It's a, it's a different type of intensity again, and then it turned me. And I think as well with the SNC, it helps with uh, injury prevention. Mm. So you've got your muscles and our, have all your joints and that correct. It just stops you getting little niggles and I find as well. Keep it nice and strong. I said bicep curls for your longevity. That's what we like to see. Kills for the gills. <laughs> Love to see it. Uh, Armbar Defense 101. Love to see it. <laughs> just curl out. Really. <laughs> that's, that's what we all do. Don't we all do that? That's, uh, it's pretty standard. <laughs> then slam them and go deep into the armbar. I mean, jiu-jitsu wouldn't work in a street fight. You know how it goes. <laughs> I, I just see red, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> But I lost my train of thought again. Uh, with um, <laughs> consistency, longevity, all this sort of stuff, again, it's a very thankless job in itself. It's something you do for your own passion. What keeps you consistent? What keeps you striving? Are you very goal oriented? Is it fight by fight? What is your why, so to speak? Um, it used to be, I think now it's got to be fight by fight because obviously I planned on beating Matthew and then moving on to the next one. But like, with fight by fight now, I just plan on just getting ready for the next one. So I just want to win my next fight. And then after that, because every fight will be your biggest fight, do you know what I mean? Of your life. It kind of has to be in a way, you know what I mean? But um, I don't really put that much stress on it. At the end of the day, it's something I'd like to do. It's something I've been doing since the age of 10. It's I like, and for me as well, if I don't get to do a day job, I'm doing what I do day in, day out, and I love to do it. I'm kind of winning a life anyway, do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I just... I think fight at a time, just stay in the gym, stay motivated and just get in there and get a job done. If if you pick up little L's, I guess, little losses, a little bumps in the road, it's easy to get to, especially like this age of social media and stuff like that. Everyone's soon to jump on the bandwagon when you're winning and losing. But I think people just need to like switch off from that and just if if you're confident to know where you're going in the sport and you know what skill set you have, you know what people you've got behind you, just keep your head down to the grind and just get it done. If it's something, if this is what you really want to do, like I like that for so many reasons. And what you've sort of highlighted there is that the people are very fickle. Again, if you win at the weekend, you're the best fighter since sliced bread. You know what I mean? Best thing ever. Exactly. You, you lose, you're washed up. You never should train again. And like, why? why? <laughs> I know, These yeah. people are completely irrelevant. Like, like who? Yeah, like what? Exactly. Whose opinion do you care more about? Jack Shaw, who's currently in the UFC and obviously Cage Warriors bantamweight champion. Or some bloke with like zero followers, zero posts that says you're shit. Yeah. He's <laughs> got a little fucking shell Twitter emoji, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, right, exactly. Like... <laughs> I, I, yeah. No. I've heard a, I heard a saying, I think Dan Lucas said, he said something like, um, don't take criticism of people you wouldn't go for your advice for. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, these, but like, that's never really got to me anyway. I'm quite, I'm not really on my phone anyway. I go on social media just because of fight and just to put your post up here and there. It's never really, I, like, I don't go on Twitter. I don't really know how to use Twitter and I think that's for the best if I'm honest. Like, but uh, yeah, so um, then that stuff really gets to me anyway. I'm just going to crack on and do me and keep on fighting. Ignorance is bliss. I mean, this is mm-hmm. sort of what I like a lot about that sort of approach. And this is the sort of people I want on the podcast is the people who get on with it and don't make a song and dance so I can make the song and dance for you. Because again, <laughs> like, again you, you're very modest. You keep yourself to yourself. Again, before seeing your fight, I wasn't aware of your career and then sort of did a bit of research speaking to Indy as well. I was like, fucking hell, how has this guy not been like, you know, up and say, I want to like, yeah. give you this kind of 
insight for people to see like you're the fucking man like this is mega oh, i appreciate that boss nice one this is what i mean i do like, appreciate it because like people will hear that and think oh, i'm sucking up but not not really no i'm aspiring mma fight myself and seeing someone like yourself who's getting stuck in get testing yourself and again i respect it more than anything and asking yourself these questions a lot of this comes from my own personal like okay if i'm dealing yeah. with this i'm struggling with this how does someone who's got the experience you have deal with it how have you troubleshoot with these things and it's so mm-hmm. invaluable absolutely love it and like you said like with this game it's it's not it's 90 percent mental 10 percent physical obviously the physical bit's hard but um if you're not up here with it then uh you ain't gonna last like do you know what I mean and if taking a loss upsets you fuck me look you can see robbie law he's 27 and 10 he's lost 10 times he's one of the best to ever do it like so don't take it it's not boxing either do you know what I mean you could take a loss and it's not the end of your life like so uh yeah just chill out get back to the grind and get the next job done well, this is so why, I like, should... Cage Wars especially is, like, so cutthroat with this. Because, again, if you were in a boxing organization, you get spoon-fed bum after bum after bum. And, like, this new prospect is now a million and oh, and he's going to fight yeah, someone who Before he fights anyone you know. good, like... Yeah, it's like, okay. Yeah, no. And then... Exactly. It, it sort of bites itself in the ass, though. Because as soon as that undefeated fighter is gone, they stop marketing him. I'm saying, why? Mm. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I see what you mean there. Like, um, obviously, they're going to go for their stars, and they go, like, Ian Gary, for instance, now to be fair, doing me six and always banging boys out. Like, but um, you have to be producing the results. But like, I don't see fighters can't get aggy if um, the promotion is not pushing them. But at, at the same time, they're not producing these results. Like, if I went in there and banged out uh, Matthew in like fucking thirty seconds, I'm sure there'd be like a fucking highlight of me on Twitter and that. Uh, mm. But like, if you're not producing it, you can't be mad at the organization for not promoting you either. Do you know what I mean? It's a kind of like a catch-22, I believe. Like, well, that's more the promotion side. My side was more getting spoon-fed things and getting built up in the same kind of way. And so oh, it's, okay, it's, okay. Def- it's definitely both sides of it. And also shout Ian Gary, top <laughs> boy, because again, with Ian Gary, little side note here, one thing being popular, but he's also likable and also talking to him and seeing his little comments yeah. on people's like posts being encouraging, think, you know what? Yeah, really he seems see. like a funny lad, doesn't he? To be fair to him. He's... So, I mean, you want someone like that who's charismatic, but also genuine. So yeah, shout Ian Gary, mm. top boy. And He's a beast. And this is what I mean. And when it comes to yourself like that, because again, result is one thing, but performance and again, the bigger career and the bigger picture. And this is this is sort of the point. Like, yes, you won't get the the perfect O's record and you know, this that, but it's not really the point. Because mm-hmm. people know that if you've had like three or four fights in cage, or say if you go three and one, two and two, or whatever else, people know, do you know what? They're all legit fights. They're yeah, right. yeah. So regardless of the actual end result for going for the camp, this is it as well. This is something I really want to highlight is dealing with all this per camp so one preparation obviously i'm if you have like back-to-back fights but the point being the preparation yeah. the toll you take on yourself physically mentally and then getting through that and to be fair i think the, the toughest thing i've ever done is an imaf tournament because um obviously you go to the pros you weigh in the day before you get like 36 hours to 24 hours 36 depending on the time gap to recover then you go in and fight bearing in mind you're going to knees and elbows and the forearms gloves I found with the eye math, it's like you fight on the first day, then you wake up the next day, the aches start to kick in. You go fight that day, and then the aches kick in again. And by the third day, you're kind of like walking around like a zombie, but you still got to fight. So I think like if you can get for that type of mental fortitude as well, like it makes a pro green quite a lot easier in that respect, if you know what I mean. Well, this is the whole thing of like training harder than you're going to fight. And again, if you're used to having to show up on fight day when you're not feeling 100%, so much so you were 100% and now you're 80% yeah. and then you're 40%, exactly, yeah. you're like it's best part of 10% down, by the time the final comes around and then we are, you've got to show yeah. up. It's like, especially those IMAF brackets, man. I think you could draw, you could get the same like bracket, draw it different each week. You'd have a different different winner each week depending on like the outcome of the fights and that. You know, a fight and like anything can happen in a fight. Do you know what I mean? So, um, but I think what the IMAFs are doing is brilliant. It's going to help. It's going to fucking the next level of um, athletes are going to be so much better because of these formats. Like now, knowing what you know now, if you could go back to your amateur career, would you have as many fights as you've had? Would you prioritize the IMAF the same way? Would you go to pro sooner? What would you like to do in retrospect? Would you do the same thing you've done now? Um, the only thing I'm a bit tamping about. But to be fair, this is no one's fault. This is COVID's fault. Is that they had me out of the cage for a year and a half. But that's purely just down to COVID. So that's the only thing that annoys me. But um, but that's just because I like to be active. Now we like, I'll probably start getting more active fights in. I'll start fighting every three, four months. But um, I, 
I don't regret anything, if I'm honest. Maybe going to grappling instead of boxing as a kid. Mm. Maybe I wouldn't have that problem with Matthew Elliott now. But um, <laughs> but uh, no, um, I wouldn't wouldn't change any of it, if I'm honest. The irony is, if you went into um, grappling the same time you did UK and everything else, you probably would fight Matthew in like Commonwealth or something like that anyway. Yeah, it'd been in a judo <laughs> tournament instead of a, a cage fight. Like, But um, no, I'm pretty sure, like you said, um, he even said this himself, we'll probably see each other down the line. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. Two young lads, like so. Um, but yeah, when it comes to the amateur days, I don't have no regrets. No, glad I took the fights I did. Tried to take the toughest fights possible, ready for the pro game, and uh, so yeah, no regrets. Absolutely spot on. I've got a couple of questions. These are ones I'm asking everyone just to get your own version of this. First one is: you're about to walk out for your fight. A version of you comes out now, gives you the best advice you can get. What are you going to say to yourself before you walk out to give you that best kind of mental headspace to perform? Ooh, what would I say to myself? <laughs> yeah. Right, go on, son. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Just switch on. Switch on you. Give myself a slap and say, switch on. Perfect. Don't take a clip to wake up. That's probably what I'd say to myself. I like that because it's very personal to you, especially talking about the frustration you have with yourself, that the urgency and that kind of proactivity is where you mm-hmm. need to talk, make that development again. That's all it needs. Just switch on. You know the way yeah. as well. I like that. Um, post fight competition what is in your takeaway delivery basket what are you saying go on what is the damage right, after a fight every fight I take a pack of Jaffa cakes just because that just needs to be done after a fight and then when it comes to food then depends if we're driving home if we're on the way home straight away we'll probably hit up a Mac D's spend like £10 worth get like all the burgers Big Macs triple cheeseburgers a lot and then pizza pizza when you win is a lot better than pizza when you lose to be fair though so yeah, so only spot. pizza when you win. Yeah. Now when we but say pizza, pizza, let's go in detail though. What are you saying to your pizza? What's your base? What's your toppings? What is the damage? Your professional athlete now, I'm, professional standards. Go and talk to me. I'm quite a basic, uh, basic bitch, if I'm honest. I just like the cheese. Like if I had my way, it'd be stuffed crust and just chicken and ham with tomato base. That's all I want. That's all you need. I'm not asking a lot. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> asking a lot. Is that... A simple man with simple pleasures. Just let me have one. Yeah, just protein and carbs. Like. <laughs> what more do you want? And the last one. A beginner comes into the gym day one. He says, Scotty boy, I heard you on Fisticuffs, you're the top boy, but I need some advice. I need the guidance for my career. What is one rule of thumb you'd give me to get me started in the right direction? One rule of thumb. Don't start. You're like, don't talk to me like being spoken to. Don't do to. MMA. Why, why are you doing MMA for? No, I wouldn't say that. Speak when spoken to. <laughs> <laughs> you know no, who I, I am. I just, attitude, I think, is a big thing, isn't it? Because you could be... You've seen all these memes before and you can be a talent that you want and all that shit. But um, I think if you come in with good attitudes, willing to listen to the coach, when they tell you something, take it on and try and do it. So just attitude, listening and just be positive and enjoy it as well. It's not like, I think fighters get this wrong. Like, you're not made to fight. So why, like, I don't get me wrong, the, the weight cut and all that shit and then no one likes doing that. But just try and enjoy the moment. Because I suppose one day it's not going to be here, is it? Do you mean one day you're not going to get to fight? You're not going to get to go to this place to do that. So just enjoy it. Enjoy it. Have fun and just take it in. Beautiful. And again, it's being present in the moments again. Like when you're there, it's like, yes, I hate it. Yes, it's horrible. Yes, it's anxiety inducing. But you know what? I'm in a fighter's hotel in Cage already. This exactly. is, this is a fucking like that, dream. Yeah. This is real. It was a Hilton as well. It was a nice hotel. That's what I mean. Good food nice. and all that. Can't complain. Yeah, fucking, um, <laughs> what is it again? It's... um. Oh, it's going to annoy me. What is it? It's, oh, whereabouts in London was it? I can remember where it is. Oh, is it? Um, I don't think I can. Canary Wolf. Tell you. Canary Wolf. That's, that's the one. That's, that's the what I'll say. Yeah. yeah. Doing all right. Um, last question. <laughs> most important question. Social media. Where can people find you? Uh, Scott EP102 on Insta. And to be fair, that's the only thing I really go on. And Facebook, I just keep for the family and that, all the older heads. Um, don't go really go on Twitter. I got Snapchat as well, but I don't really go on that. So just Scotty P one oh two on Insta. And the OnlyFans, oh, you got a link for that? No, yeah, that's starting in the next couple of months, but I'll keep you posted. That's it. <laughs> close to content on there. Um any sponsors you want to shout out? Uh yeah, I got a few sponsors. Um they're all on my Instagram page. So everyone who helped me for my last fight, I really do appreciate it, especially with the medicals and that the first time around it ain't cheap. But um I really do appreciate that everyone supporting me, all the help as well, all the Welsh fans as well getting behind me. In a small nation, I do appreciate it. Fantastic. And again, guys, when fighters have their sponsors, support them where you can. Because again, if a fighter can show they can get engagement from the sponsors, they're more likely to get more, you know, return business. And on top of that, 
again, the overheads for the fighting is very thankless. You get the medical bills, you get the testing, everything else. I won't go into exactly, detail, yeah. but it's very um, <laughs> it's not what Pricey. you want. It's not what you want in the slightest. So there's that. Be sure to check out our sponsors, the English Hypnotist. Again, anyone who deals with any kind of mental block, self-sabotage, that kind of stuff. Conversation with Richard is game-changing. Again, I'll do a post on my thing a bit later on about it, but definitely worth it. Um, Fist of Cuffs underscore podcast on social media platforms. You see behind me my high-quality um, <laughs> laundry drying thing. We've got the rash guards. How, um, I was going to ask you as well, how, how are you doing your MMA career? Have you had many fights? Have you had many amateur bouts? Or... So I've been training the best part of five, six years now. I've had three bouts, but fairly recently. And again, like initially my problem has been not showing up in the day. I'm one and two at the minute. I won my last one back in March. Initially nice. was going to go straight back into it like constantly, but obviously Corona stopped, stopped things down, started the podcast. And again, fighting again in July, but as far as I'm concerned, it's you don't know when you're fighting, so I'm just staying ready. Yeah, but that's the way, man. That's the way. Everyone you're listening, with some good boys, though, don't you? With Jordan Vajanic and them, like I do indeed. Everyone listening, don't worry. Aside, I'm, lads. I'm not currently training in the gym. I'm outside social distancing. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Shadow boxing in the park. All that's, good, that's all but... I'm doing. We're doing my laps. Don't worry about that. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, very appreciate your time, my friend. Be sure to check out Scott. Be sure to keep up to date with his journey. Again, huge future.